Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I realize we're uh, getting beyond fashionably late at this point to start. So let's uh, start our start our afternoon. My name is Michael Egan. I teach in the history department here at McMaster University, and I'm running this uh, rolling seminar on uh, bikes and bike culture this year. We have three talks lined up through the fall, uh, and a, we're working on a, a much fuller itinerary for the winter semester. So. Uh, the best way to find out about it at eganhistory.com. There's a link to the series. There's information and posters there. There's also a Facebook page called the Bello, uh, the McMaster Bike Project. And you're very welcome to join that and updates on uh, various events and conversations uh, will carry on there as well. Uh, the series is funded by the uh, Petro Canada Young Innovator Award. Um, which is designed to bring re uh, academic research and undergraduate uh, research and training together. And it seemed to me on some level that while I could work with a small group of students, talking about bikes, not just historically, but in terms of thinking about Hamilton and a larger scope, it seemed as though bringing in a series of speakers, bringing together a variety of different interested parties, seemed like a better way of sort of sharing the, the preliminary fruits of the research that's going on. So uh, that's really sort of what I'm hoping the series can do. It will be built into a couple of classes in January. And we can, I'm, I'm happy to share information about that as we go forward. Our next speaker is actually coming as early as next week. Franz Strzok uh, of Velominati.com, or uh, the founder of Velominati, will be here and talking on about aesthetics of bikes. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Velominati. They, they have the rules of road riding, which is uh, a combination of taking cycling very seriously, but at the same time, being very good at taking it, uh, putting uh, tongue firmly planted in cheek. So uh, it should be a lively conversation as well. But today, uh, I'm, please join me in welcoming Evan Weiss, uh, bike snob, a best-selling author, a Pulitzer Prize winner for Peace, uh, Nobel Prize for Literature imminently. Uh, and, uh, second, that's the second one. Second one, congratulations. Yeah. Unprecedented second one. Yeah. So. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, blogger extraordinaire and provocateur at the same time. Um, right. It's Canada. I, I'm, I'm okay. catering to both sides of our audience right. here. Now, when, when, we, when we initially conceived this series, rather than asking people to stand in front of a podium and talk formally, it seemed as though sort of a more organic and casual conversational style might allow for um, more, more engagement with, with a broader audience. So how this is going to work is that uh, Evan and I will sort of start a conversation with some questions, talk for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up and in seminar sense, allow for, for, for an extended Q&A that can extend the conversation we began. Um, and I just had some very basic and general questions in terms of starting and wanted to, yeah. uh, we can start with the, the biographical perhaps and talk a little bit, I mean, bikes. Um, you ride bikes, I, is this a lifelong kind of a? I do ride bikes and it is lifelong. I, I'm one of those people who, um, uh, I, I, as soon as I learned how to ride a bike, I, I was hooked on it. And, I always rode as a kid. When I got older, got into racing bikes, racing BMX bikes. That was certainly a popular thing when I was that age, so I, I, was, I was very deeply into that. And uh, I continued, just continued, got older, started racing road bikes and all that. But, you know, like a lot of people, I kind of, like a lot of people in this part of the world, I came into it from the, the recreational side, and then only later did I really appreciate the practical side. You know the commuting side. Even when I did commute, um, I, I, I sort of I didn't I didn't think of the commuting as, as sort of it was like junk miles between races or something. And then suddenly, you know, I realized the racing is kind of the stupid part. It's the commuting is the more interesting and, and, and fun part. So, um, but yeah, a uh, uh, lifelong uh, uh, cyclist, bicycle enthusiast. And and from, presumably from that transition in terms of sort of shifting over to taking the commuting more seriously, I mean, is, does the blog sort of come out of that? I just started coming, I, my, my sense of the blog, I'm totally, I'm probably totally wrong on this, but blog and bikes, I mean, there sort of seems to be this notion that um, bikes are fun, right. people take the world too seriously, don't be a jerk. Yeah. Um, and, but I almost imagine you sort of coming home after commuting and going, oh my God, you know, today's, yeah, I mean, part of it is certainly uh, uh, commuting can be fraught with frustration and and, uh, and and anger and irritation, and, and you need to you need to vent and all of that stuff. But at the same time, I think a lot of the reason I started the blog um, 
Um, there's a lot of things I felt like I just wanted to, to firebomb, things that, that really bothered me. Um, and I think one of the things that bothers me is all the kind of um, any person, and I recognize it because I'm one of these people too, you know, it, anybody who takes something really seriously or, or thinks they're special somehow because they're, because they're riding a bike, which, which is, uh, which is, which pretty much anybody can do, right? There's nothing special about riding a bike at all. This is not, you're not special. Uh, um, so, so I, at a certain point, you, you, you see all this stuff, and you just want to you just want to knock down the seriousness. You want to knock down all the stuff that 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 maybe intimidates people and, and, and keeps them from wanting to ride a bike. That finds you know all the stuff that makes you find the act of riding a bike intimidating. Because um, there's enough intimidation coming from just the the, the the culture at large. Like it's 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 seen as a fringe thing still to ride a bike. That's bad enough. Uh, uh, that it's that way, but then, then you know, like it's perpetuated. So, so they want it, it, to, to, to be more specific. Yeah, just to knock down barriers. Anything, okay. anything that's that's special and precious. I just want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> but, uh, where, to tell us a little bit about you know again where where that blog started. I mean, was this uh, you know. Well, like you, you did, I mean, you've got a, not just a cult following. Well, there was like when the block started, this whole fixed gear thing was was really starting to happen. Okay. Right? This trend, and I, I'm sure most people are familiar with this. I don't know. I don't know if people here know my blog or know what it is, or even ride bikes, or I, you know, I don't know if it's But so the I it was 2007 when I started the blog, and certainly in New York, this. The, the, the fixed gear uh, uh, trend is, is, was really starting to, to happen, you know, and, and there was an unprecedented amount of, of foolishness on display on the streets, on the internet, everywhere. So as a short-term thing, that sort of, there, there, was, there was so much that was, that was amusing about that that, 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 that certainly helped, helped trigger it. Okay. You know, this is suddenly, this thing I've been doing for a long time, it, riding bikes, is is suddenly it's it's trendy, and that's that's just funny, and that, that needs to be kind of mocked, you know. Can can we talk humor and then come back to the bikes then? Uh, yes. Are you, we can talk about anything. <laughs> this is a no holds well, barred. There is an invitation. <laughs> there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like I should take my bow tie off then. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, no, I mean, I'm just sort of thinking, I mean, there's, in, in terms of the blog itself, I mean, you, 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 you've clearly struck a chord, and I mean, whether it is just sort of a particular, I mean, whether you sort of imagine blog posts on a daily or a weekly basis, sort of trying to hit a particular series of memes that you've sort of introduced into the blog, or whether, you know, there's just sort of that momentary inspiration on a given day that sort of sets up the, the Pretext for for a, a yeah I don't know I just not, I don't really think about it it's I, just I don't breaking down there just yeah no I I mean I just I have my things that I think about and that I find funny and irritating and, and, and all the rest of it and, and every day I sit down and I just kind of whatever I feel like talking about that day I talk about it I mean it's 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 a lot of fun and definitely a big a big part of that was for me uh, when I started it I had a real job um, and I did I. For the first few years, I, I did it at that job. You know, that was a big, important part of it. Was I didn't want to be at that job, I didn't want to be doing that job. I was doing that job in a very half-assed fashion. So that was a big. That was like when you're when you're in like a you know an enclosure and you see a little beam of light, like your chance for escape. Like I started the blog and people started reading it, and and, and I was you know that was it. I was committed to it. And, uh, so. Um, and I like to do it, so hopefully other people are reading it at their jobs. <laughs> Seriously, you know that's <coughs> that, that's that's the point. Well, it's to, something to read and laugh at when you should be doing something else. A, a big part of the series. It doesn't stand on its own. If you have leisure time and you don't have something else to be doing, this why would you read this? It's, like, well, it's better than working. Is, <laughs> 
also think I, I, I'm not a nice feature of this, this, this job and the, 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 the research grant and things, I can now read the blog and justify this as, as part of my working. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the next time, obviously. But yeah, I don't think about okay. it very much. Okay. I mean, I do, but I don't, but I don't plan it. No, it's or not. Have an okay. agenda or so it is just sort of a. Because that's more, you're, you're remarkably prolific. I mean, in terms of, you know, four sort of major posts a day and then sort of a, an end of week kind of summary and. Bit of play. Yeah, you know, it's, so, it's like that's writing. A lot of writing. It is a lot of writing, but uh, I, I'm full of it. You know, <laughs> BS. Like that's what it is. And when you're full of BS, you, you know, you've seen the movie History of the World. I assume. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. yeah. You know, sure. and he says uh, when he goes to collect the welfare, he says, "I'm a stand-up philosopher." He says, "Oh, you're a bullshit artist." He's like, "Yes." He's like, "I'm a bullshit artist." It's, 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 it's artisanal bullshit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but then at the same time, it's it's like it's kind of like riding a bike, or not not just riding. You know, it's like like riding a bike to go fast or whatever. Where you sort of have to do it every day. You, okay. you know. But you mentioned you know, partly this is di diversify as well. Or sorry, I failed to mention in the introduction a, a self-titled first album, uh, Mike Snob, and a second book. Uh, the Enlightened Cyclist. Uh, I mean, you sort of expanded from the blog into a. I mean, there's there's a lot of overlap. But I mean, there's a different kind of a message in, in the books. Obviously, a more focused. Sort of yeah, I mean, the book's not a blog. You know, no, no. A, a, a blog you can write about stuff that happened, you know, two hours ago. That's just not going to be relevant to anyone in the world two hours from now, and it's it's possible and all that. But like with the with the books, when I, I wrote the books, uh, that I wanted to be more, especially when I wrote the first book. I, I wanted that book to be about like, why do I like cycling? You know, what what is great about it, and and uh, or to me anyway, and that's sort of what I hope I, I managed to, to put across in the book. That's underneath the blog, underneath all my my goofiness. That's just there because I, I I love to ride bike and it's part of who I am. And, and and underneath all of it, you just want to be a happy person. You know. So, so that's under it, but but it, you know, that's, so the book I tried to do that a little, a little less kind of guy, and a little more sincerity, and, uh, you know, made it in a more accessible way. I don't know if it comes across that way or not, but that, that was. Sort of well, I mean, it, it, it certainly does. I mean, again, maybe I'm asking the wrong question or should move on, but I'm, 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 there's in, in both the, the the books retain sort of the the. As you sort of described, all sort of the fun-loving humor associated with the way you're kicking down doors or kicking down barriers and things by sort of suggesting hey, there, there's a lot of fun going on in the books. I mean, they're funny, yeah. and there's a lot of smart, you know, pointed arguments to be made, but at the same time done in a, a you know, characteristic kind of kind of wit at the same time. I'm sure humor is a method of talking about bikes and things. Whether this is sort of a almost a, you know an American version of Canadian passive aggressiveness in terms of Finding ways to sort of make fun of or lampoon or yeah, it's, I mean that's just how I look at the the world and I yeah. think and, and I just I, I look at everything and, and I, I just kind of I'm just a wild I'm a sarcastic person maybe I have trouble with sincerity I guess in that way but yeah there, there's just cycling's really it's a really silly thing the bike world is is very fun <laughs> it just is it's silly. I think I think cycling comes off funny when it, I think cycling when it's taken seriously, too seriously. It, it's it's uh, I don't know. That's why I always make fun of David Byrne on the on the site. Like I don't have anything against him at all. I think he's I think what he does is great. But at the same time, I think that I think when it, when, when cycling enters that that realm of being crushes again, it just sets me. It, that that's what triggers me. What what makes cycling precious? Maybe we can sort of segue here. But what what makes cycling precious? I mean, you've got a, another get helmets, for example, or a variety. Yeah, of the, cycling offers a huge number of opportunities for people to take themselves very seriously and feel special. That's really the case. Uh, whether it's a, some some notion that you have special physical prowess because you can ride a bike up a hill faster than some other person, <laughs> that you're special, or that you race a bike and somebody else doesn't, you're special, or, or you ride to work and somebody else drives, so you're special because you're cleaner, or you're more, you know, all of that, every level, you know, I'm more in touch with my environment than other people because I ride a bike, and look, it's not to say there's not validity in any, in any of those things, I mean, these, these things are true, but it really, it really is so, so, it affords you so many opportunities to, to just 
show that, that extra notch and just feel smug and special. Um, uh, it, it really does in a way that you know, a few other things do that. Religion does it, <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, um, yeah, you, you can take it all the way. There's entire cities founded on this, on this fungus. And uh, yeah, and that's part of the thing also is, is, is uh, you know, somewhere, you discover, like, when you travel a little bit, there are places where there's no smugness. They're cycling free from smugness, which is an amazing thing to, to see. It's rare in North America. You know, it's almost impossible to ride a bike here, it seems, without, like, this I'm special thing. Yeah. Well, how did, outside of mocking smug special people off their bikes, how, how, how do we overcome that sort of preciousness around the bike? I think you just have to laugh at it and have fun with it. That's okay. what I think. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, 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 it's a great thing. It's, it's nothing wrong with feeling good about yourself, sure. but it makes you feel good to ride a bike. That's, that's the part of it. It's just important to laugh at it, I think. And you know, I think really, if I, I, it would be so nice if cycling. There's always going to be the 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 the, the certain uh, recreational aspects of cycling. That they're always going to be the same: riding a, a road bike, or racing, or mountain bikes, or whatever. You know, those are things like skiing, or like golf, or like anything else that people are always going to do for pleasure, and they're all going to have their their same you know, equipment and rules and, and, and all of that. And those are what they are. But as far as just riding bikes to, to get around, uh, uh, I think and hope just by mere virtue of the fact that the world is changing and people are changing and, and, and people are becoming more interested in riding bikes, that ultimately, hopefully, just you could do that without there being anything attached to it. It can be a practical decision as opposed to a, 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 an announcement of your politics or your, 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 your world view or, or some kind of environmental thing. You can just get on the bike. You know, like they do in some of these other countries. And, and, and we're, we're seeing that coming. I mean, I mean, there seem to be more I people think on so, yeah. roads and cities taking it more seriously in terms of design and infrastructure of bike yeah. lanes and bike spaces and green spaces for things yeah. like cars and Sure, absolutely. I mean, where I live, it's, the, it's huge what they've done. They've, they've added so much infrastructure, and there's more people who just ride bikes to ride bikes. And yeah. So it normalizes it right there. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It doesn't mean they're just more jerks on the road, but it's actually that, that notion of being... Well, if, I, let's, don't get me wrong. If people yeah. using this infrastructure, are a lot of them are jerks. Yeah. You know, it's not really their fault, because they don't know how to use it. You know, it's suddenly... After you get all these people, they've only ridden a bike until they were, you know, 11 or 12 or 13 or something. And then they stop riding a bike, and then they get driver's licenses, and then they do whatever they do. And then, then they move to Brooklyn, and they're like, oh, cool, I can ride a bike. And, they, and they, in their head, they're still 12. So they don't know how to ride the bike well. They don't know how to do anything right. <laughs> you know? but, so there's growing pains. You're getting this new infrastructure, but there's there's like a huge hole in in your cycling experience when you're from this part of the world. There is because it's not you don't grow up learning how to ride a bike like a smart adult. So you're providing a public service. In the, in uh, here, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably the same around here. So. Well, this isn't about me. I mean, I, I just want to talk. No, no, I understand. Lot, yeah. yeah, there's this huge hole in our experience, and the only the only people who have any sort of Feeling in that hole between you know being the little kid on the bike and being the grown up on the bike are the people who stuck with riding bikes because say they like to race bikes or whatever you know those are the only people who you know so that's why if you see a lot of people riding bikes in these new bike lanes a lot of them are either sort of clueless or they're racing okay you know you can't get on a bike and ride in a straight line like at a normal speed. <laughs> There's a, the, the idea of a normal but that's yeah, coming. Yeah, that's yeah, coming. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, I, I I don't know if anyone here are familiar with uh, either Evan's books or the blog. Spent any time cycling around New York, um, and uh, read and enjoyed books and blogs while riding around here. I was down in New York with a with a bike this uh, this past summer, and uh, for the first.
first time to run, you know, inside of half an hour, I think everything you described, uh, you know, as, as being sort of these annoying features of, of riding in, in Brooklyn and Manhattan happened to me. And I sort of thought, oh, the blog's much funnier all of a sudden, because I, you know, again, in terms of smaller roads, more people in confined space and things. But, yeah. well, I mean, I, to take this, take, take it to a slightly sort of a, a more serious way, I mean, obviously more people on bikes than, um, uh, just mathematically suggest the potential for more jerks I emerging out of the woodwork, but do more. I, I, I well, understand the emerging with wobbly yeah, legs okay. from, from into this new world of riding bikes and they're fighting but, their legs. Yeah. But will it also then sort of ultimately sort of reduce the amount of crazy riding further along if there are more people doing it, more people need yeah, to Yeah, I would like to think and hope the, that it's self selecting. I mean, okay. you, can't go to, <laughs> you can't go to a place like Amsterdam and ride like that. You'll get shouted off the. You know, it's just like you can't. In the in in cities here that are car centric, if you if you if you drive like a complete idiot, um, you're not going to get away with it. You can drive like a complete idiot and run over a cyclist. No one cares about that. But if you drive like a complete, if you go the wrong way up a, up the highway, you can't do that. There's too many cars there. It, it, if you if you even survive, or whatever, people hock you, they call the police. You know, you just can't do it. And in a place like Amsterdam. Uh, um, that's what it's like. You just couldn't ride like a bonehead because it's not possible. There's too many people in the bike lanes on bikes going in a forward fashion. So you couldn't be like a bike salmon with your headphones in Amsterdam. Like you, they're running into the canal. <laughs> but you can do it here because it's still filling out. Okay. There's still the visible world. But you're. I think that's what they call critical mass. Not critical mass as in the ride, but once cycling reaches critical mass and that there's enough people doing it, then pedestrians don't stand around in the bike lane looking at the trees anymore because you can't do it. People want to ride the runway because you can't do it. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we've got, on, on some level, bikes and cyclists not being sufficiently seen are part of the, the larger transportation infrastructure, but cyclists themselves are being their own worst enemies in terms of sort of generating goodwill towards bikes. Um, but it, but this is sort of a development towards yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But again, you have to temper okay. that. But yeah. it's not fair to be too too hard on them. Like I can be hard on them because I, I ride on, I ride a bike. But you know, and yeah, people who don't ride a bike are very hard on cyclists. Like someone who's riding a bike, oh, they shouldn't have a bike lane because every time I see a cyclist, they're not stopping at a light or something. Right. I don't care what you think. Right. <laughs> they're not stopping at lights because they're marginalized. They don't know what they should be doing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, let's, let's let's pick up on some of your memes. Uh, um, one one of the debates that uh, we, we've had here in Hamilton on a number of different occasions uh, talked about helmets. Yeah. And whether helmets should be required or not. This actually means that we can talk about. Okay. Why not? Because why? Do you have to wear it? Because you just say, well, yeah. what's the point, really? What? Because it's, it's maybe a little safer if you land on your head? Right. So what? So you have to make a law to do that? And, and I, any of these places where they have helmet laws, like it's, it's, it's bad for cycling. It doesn't encourage it. Okay. So it discourages cycling by virtue of? Yeah, you have to put on another special piece of equipment and it sends this message that it's more dangerous than it is and all of that stuff. But, and people like act like you're insane if you ride a bike without a helmet or say that you do it, and look, I wear a helmet sometimes and sometimes I don't. It depends what I'm doing. Is that decision arbitrary? Probably is, you know. Uh, but look, you know, I, uh, I, was, I read uh, Keith Richards' autobiography, right, which I, which I, uh, it's a great book, which I highly recommend. Keith Richards' autobiography is great, okay. When you read Keith Richards' life, and all the things that he did, and all the drugs that he did, and, and gun slinging, and scrambling for drugs, and just the worst neighborhoods in the world, okay? And I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, and people think you're crazy because you get on a bike and ride down the street to the store without putting a helmet on. That's ridiculous. That's the craziest thing I, I do in my life, is, like, I'm a blogger, you know? I get up, I go on a computer, I don't do anything. The craziest thing I do is get on a bike and ride, and ride it to the store, maybe, without putting a helmet on. Ooh, you know? <laughs> that's not crazy, it's just not. And then you tell people who are kind of not cyclists, and maybe are, are thinking of 
riding a bike to get around, and it's like you have to wear a helmet, it's the law, it's that, but it's just one more reason like that, eh, forget that, just drive, or just whatever. And, and licenses too? Yeah. The... Yeah, no, you know, it's, it, no, you don't need that stuff. You just, it needs to be, it needs to be accessible, that's it. That's, that's, it's, it's not, anyone who rides a bike long enough learns how to do it properly. And if the license or no license, you, if you do something wrong, you get in trouble. You get tickets, you get all of that stuff. So you get the whole license. They should teach it in schools. I think they should teach you how to ride a bike. Yeah. That should be a normal thing. Like schools have auto shop and things like that. And why shouldn't you just have riding class? Rider's ad or something. But they say if they get a license to ride a bike, it's just, Well, I know that's not an intellectual no, argument it's, that it's well, stupid, but it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens more in these walls, between these walls than you think. Uh, why aren't more people riding in North America then? I mean, is this just sort of a, we love our automobiles and there's this car love phenomenon in North America? I mean, it just, it seems to me most of our cities are set up that you can, you can live on a bike. Well, yeah, which is why most most cities that are that are rideable are that are experiencing an increase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's certain lifestyles such as where a high school's not really going to help you out too much. Sure. You know, so in a farm in Kansas, you're probably not going to have that much use for for a bike. Right. It's the way it is. But yeah, most cities that are rideable, yeah, you're seeing it. It's just inevitable. Okay. Um, as for why why it's happening now as opposed to, to a while back, I guess. I think, I think uh, you know, bikes and cars are about the same, or the safety bicycle and, and cars, automobile, are roughly the same age. Uh, uh, came to that at roughly the same time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the car really, people really ran with the car and the infrastructure, you know, very quickly for the car. And I think it's just sort of, Sort of evening out. Yeah. But some cities obviously adopted more quickly and more readily yeah. lifestyle. Thing. I mean, I'm thinking obviously Portland and I mean just the growth in Vancouver, for example, which was never a cycling friendly city until quite recently, has expanded tremendously. But even Manhattan, I mean, and, and, and Brooklyn, I mean, the, the lanes have gone in reasonably quickly in ways that have really sort of encouraged and. Yeah, it's just a sign, you know. It just tells people it's okay. It's it's it tells me and it's already. Uh, I mean, it's something people have always been doing in a place like New York. It's riding a bike was always, because it is a lot of a lot of instances. It's the fastest way to get around. It just is, and there there are always people who are just riding bikes in a completely non-special, non-private way. Like I ride from here to there because it's faster than everything else. So the need is just there. It's just only certain people were doing it because certain people think that way. But you know, now that they're putting those, even just having the little bikey sign on the pavement sent a message that, oh, this is a, it's normal, you're allowed, so more people can put it in here. Well, I, I guess building on that, I, I'm trying to imagine ways of whether it's sort of a, again, using the term incorrectly, but a critical mass of people wanting to get on bikes and travel, or whether it's sort of the creation of sort of a safe cycling infrastructure that comes first, but how do you make cycling safe, or how do you make people want to do it? And obviously, you can't sort of go, you know, smack people over the head, you know, throw them on a bicycle and say go. They want to do it anyway. You just have to, you just have to okay. provide a little bit of infrastructure, and you have to. Uh, but if people are concerned about safety, which seems to be sort of one of the primary reasons why people elect not to cycle, I mean, a combination of safety and efficiency. Yeah, I mean, it's um, different everywhere. The problem in New York is that if somebody hits you with their car, they, they don't get in any trouble. There's no practical reason why as a driver in New York you shouldn't just run over every cyclist you see. There's no reason not to do it apart from perhaps a momentary inconvenience. But even then, it doesn't matter because if you hit a cyclist and don't stop, you're still not going to get in trouble. If they find you, this is just the way it works. You don't get in trouble. You're just, that's just the way. So. It, it differs from place to place, but that's the way it is in New York. And, and when it's like that, that, that's obviously a limiting factor, people wanting to ride a bike. And, and, and this you're is really on your own in a way you're not in any other okay. problem.
this, I mean, this, this is where, the, in, in a lot of ways, the second book, The Enlightened Cyclist, comes from. It's an open letter to commuters of all stripes, whether pedestrian, uh, by car, or by bicycle. And I mean, it's almost plain for them to get along on some level, but at the same time, sort of suggesting a, a vague sort of unspoken rules of the road. A, don't get cyclists. B, be nice Yeah, well, what that road. book is about is in lieu of any sort of pr protection uh, from the authorities or whoever else, right. then all, all we really have is our underlying humanity. And that is there, believe it or not, that, that, that we do need to look out for each other. Care for each other and that and, and look through all the irritation because it's mayhem out there. It's commuting is mayhem. Even if you just drive a car, it's people are dying constantly. There's accidents all the time. To you, it's just an annoying thing and there's a, a traffic jam somewhere. And it's, people are dead, bleeding, and it, it's carnage. It's carnage. And, and uh, um, you know, you sort of have to remember when you're out journeying. You know, in the, in the grand context of journeys, your commute is a tiny little little journey, but it, it's still a journey and things happen and you sort of have to have goodwill towards people. Um, and there, there's, there's so so much that goes wrong and so much that's irritating. So that, that's what we would love to see. You have to sort of get past that and, and not those fights. Yeah, I'm sure you've been here in this polite neck of the woods, people. Do you ever have yelling matches with people, with drivers, or if you, you ever yell at a cyclist? Like, it's good. Oh, well, it's terrible. It's a really terrible thing. And I've done it, and it's, it's, you know, it's totally. Do you want to lap base some bikes and cyclists? Okay, yeah. So is that what we're going to do? We've, well, we're going to ask questions. Put, well, we put together a bit of a slideshow. Um, just sort of thought we could sort of pick on some a couple of themes in the pictures, but um, play with some funny bikes and funny cyclists and things, and we can turn that in and open, open up the, the floor to some conversation if you like. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know what order these are in. Um, a series of just I images of bikes. I don't know. So it's just uh, free association. Please, yeah. It's, it's, it's a <laughs> worship to us. I didn't see. I think I gave you a few slides. Yeah, they're, they're in here. Okay. All right. So that's the Bach feeds. Is, are they? Are people riding the Bach feeds? Are you guys on that level yet? Oh, you gotta get on that level. You guys are way behind. Us. That's the ultimate. That's the yeah, Vancouver maybe, but it's no. That that's the Bach feeds. That's like the you know, it's just a bucket on wheels. You can throw the kids in there and go. That's, that's the ultimate in, in the smug deep. Huh? In Vancouver, it doesn't work. There are wimps in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can ride that up one of those Vancouver hills. There's a lot of water though. There's a woman in Portland who's been making big news because she rides around in the Bobbies. That's all you have to do. That's the sad thing, and certainly in the United States, is that you can just make news because you ride a big bike. That's all you have to do. Like, and, and, that was kind of a, and in Amsterdam, this sort of where people just, that's how they bring their kids to school. That's a normal thing to do. And I spent some time there with my family, and, and we rode around on one of those things. And when you're in a place where you can ride around on one of those things, it's funny. Like, people are riding those in New York City now, um, where it's sort of a, a status symbol of being a, a lefty kind of, you know, progressive person. Um, but there, where it's normal, like, it's, it's great. So making kids lazy? So making them lazy. <laughs> Mini van with the DVD right? player versus. <laughs> no, but the kids in the when you see the kids in in New York in the bot feeds, they look they do look humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> I love those things. After spending time in one, I'm like, I want one of those. It's great. You can just throw grocery bags in there. There's nothing. But the kids kind of look like. <laughs> I, I, I like the, the kid at the back there with the devil's uh, horns going as well. Like, the, um, yeah, do they look humiliated? No, they look like they're having a good time, but again, this, this sort of goes back to sort of what you're suggesting. They're probably not in America. He's making the devil horns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or, or they are, but probably in Europe. There's, there's such a novelty act that this is exciting. Yeah. But I mean, this is a part, again, sort of a, a big part of this series is about demystifying the bicycle. Why do we have these notions that, you know, this is a, a, a strange or funny notion if it is actually a convenient useful transportation tool. It's highly convenient. Yeah. 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 Um, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot, I meant to take this one out, but um, I don't know if you guys can make it out, but it's an upside down frame. Uh, uh, with, I'm guessing, perhaps the best sound system. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that's bike two wheels. I think there's another bike frame on there. Yeah, there has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. No, that's just really cool. That's <laughs> all I can say. One of the, one of the, yeah. One of the things we'll talk about through the series is again the bicycle not just as a toy or a tool, but I mean the different ways it fits into um, what we do. But I mean there's again some the design. Ingenuity. The bike's up, upside yeah. down. That's better than the tall. The people ride tall bikes here. No. Uh, uh, well, you guys are so. <laughs> you guys have no bike culture here. No. Oh. Oh. This is just, I just, uh, especially censored for, for you guys. <laughs> this, I just, I threw this in the slideshow because this is a, 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 a mo a, an important image to me on my blog. This is just something, this image makes me feel, feel good. Just because I like naked people who own, who, who, there's something funny about nudity with just an accessory on. <laughs> just the shoes and the, and the, the bliss valve look. Are there any recumbent riders? And recumbents are, recumbents are inherently amusing. <laughs> Anyone? I've seen one. Very few. You've seen one. Very few. No one here rides one, though? Not now, but no. <laughs> there, that, that's a bit. This guy, I love this. This is, this is the Wikipedia model for the cycling bib short. <laughs> so if you look on Wikipedia, he is bib shorts. This guy is the embodiment of the bib shorts. And at first, you're like, you kind of think it's a bad choice because he's kind of hairy and unkempt, and he doesn't look like a roadie. But really, it is a symbol of just the the, the misery of the of the the road cyclists, especially. It just looks like a just a put upon miserable person who just doesn't enjoy what he's doing, and the bibs are almost they're, they're oppressive. He's oppressed. It's <laughs> like force. I feel like he's fighting against the bibs and losing, and he just wants to curl into a, a ball and cry. And it's it's a sad it's a sad uh, image, and it's kind of uh, embodies this state of cycling to me. What do you mean? Like the anti Grant Peterson. This this is sort of the, the, the poster boy of what Grant Peterson is fighting about, if anybody is a Grant Peterson uh, you know who he is? Do they have Grant Peterson up here written down? Yeah. That's a good book. Uh, I'll plug his book. Just ride it's called. Would he be happier if he shaved his legs? He would he probably is I feel like he probably used to when he let it go. Oh. <laughs> okay. This man is the uh, this man. Um, I use the trigor. I use him. This is a stock photograph that some guy took in Latvia or something. But once you see this, see this image now, and I promise you, you will see it everywhere. This is the most oft reproduced stock photograph, cycling related stock photograph in the world. It's on, it's on packages of bread, it's on cycling products, it's everywhere. This man is the, has become the, the, the like, the sport cyclist icon. Um, that's all. I just, just, you, you will see him. <laughs> This is the lone wolf. Uh, he's sort of the embodiment of the cyclist who just does his own thing. You, you must have that around here. There's just some people, they don't care to be part of anything. They're not riding a bike to get around. Or maybe they are, but then they don't, they don't care to be part of any kind of one of these groups of cycling. They've just constructed their own reality and follow their own rules. And just like all the weird groups like the roadies and the this and the that, they do have their own weird a tile, but it's unique unto them. And uh, he's one of these people. And people like that are happier. They're happier than the performers. Look how happy he is. <laughs> did you find the logo for the No, logo? somebody oh, sent me that picture. Yeah. And that's another thing, like that last guy. Someone sent me that picture, and then I put it online, and then people would just see him all the time. And he's apparently a really cool guy. And he, he, he lives in Los Angeles. He doesn't sweat. One person <laughs> met him on a ride and started talking to him, and he doesn't, he just doesn't sweat. <laughs> Transcended sweat. Uh, that is so cool. Yeah, he doesn't get hot. Okay. He rides like that in the, in the, in the desert. Okay. Do we have a lone wolf? Yeah. 
beard guy. Maybe someone knows him, but he has a long beard. Yeah. He's always in the drops. Yeah. He's here? He's days in the we have a, uh, uh, a, a, a guy who yeah. must spend eight, He's nine good. hours a day just sort of at a very leisurely but smooth cadence. Oh, it's so wandering good. everywhere. He's, 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 He's quick, yeah. He's got a very short back or something. With a beard, great beard down to here. And a, oh, the beard's tied up. Yeah, the beard's tied up to keep it out of the way. Cycling puts you in yeah. that place, and some people just want to be in that place yeah. by themselves, and they want to do it the same thing every day, and they don't want. It. Yeah, it, it, cycling is something that attracts the obsessive. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is precious. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> just a design ingenuity. It's like artisanal um, soft ride, I guess. Okay. That's all that is. You know the soft ride bike, and it's a big gear. Yeah. Yeah, it's a designer software. No reason for it. Just had an office chair. I tried. I like this. What's the story behind it? Do you I, I don't know. I, I was looking for crazy bikes, and this one came up. Um, I, I'm puzzled with the two chain rings, but um, does that actually? No, it, it can't possibly. It has no purpose. Is it like a you know one of the train things? Yeah. Or you, Yanking on the handlebars to. Oh yeah, it's like a rowing bike. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you got pedals down below connected to the. Uh, it's clever. Um, bamboo bikes, I understand, are becoming popular too. Yeah, I mean, if you go to, I don't know if they. In, in Brooklyn, they have you can go to a place and you can pay them and they'll play the little arts and crafts for grown-ups and they'll give you your glue and your bamboo and you can make your little bamboo bike. And, Ride around on your misshapen bike and feel good about yourself. Why is that bamboo? It is bamboo. Anyone have a bamboo bike? Anyone inclined to build a bamboo bike? A cardboard bike. You have one? I'd be inclined to build one. A cardboard one. Yeah, isn't there one going or somebody designs some kind of cardboard bike? I think I've got a general rule that anything I build, I probably don't want to be riding. <laughs> that's the historian and not the engineer. This was on your blog not so very long ago. This is one of your. That was on mine. That was. That, I think that's one of the cockpit submissions. Oh really? Uh, with the hand I don't even remember. <laughs> that's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you clearly gave it some time in air, airspace, so yeah. yeah. I like when people just turn the bike into their home. Nice. Okay. When you just. <laughs> so people do that with their dashboards. This is something in human nature. Oh right, is that? Yeah, that has like a halogen. That's right. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's just impressive. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is either. Um, I really don't know what that is. He just built himself a crazy bike. I think it must, yeah, because if you look at the... Is it a homemade folding? The, oh, yeah, the seat tube beside the seat tube? Um, it looks as though, yeah, you could turn that in half. And Nicely done. Yeah. Is that David Byrne? Uh, I think so, yeah. On a, 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 a Parisian... Oh, he's on a bit. They leave the thing. Yeah, they leave the thing. Yeah. One of the things we've been talking about in the city as well is, is sort of in the beginnings of discussions about uh, bike share here in Hamilton and things. And there are a variety of different models and, and approaches. Um, yeah, we were supposed to get it, but they didn't get it together. Right. Yeah, they postponed it. I'm sorry to hear that. I love the bike share thing. I used it in London and Washington, D.C. It's, I love that. That's because, of, like I said, I just I like the idea of just disgustingly boring mainstream cycling to get around, and that's the ultimate. There's, there's just no opportunity for it's just communism. You cannot no personal expression or no anything. You just take this thing and it's not even yours, and you just have to ride around. It's sort of like that. I feel like there should be kind of legislation maybe to suppress some of some of this. Who's exuberance? Because part of the thing with cycling being marginalized the way it is, the reason cyclists are so kooky, partially, is because they're repressed. Because it's a repressive culture to be a cyclist in, in, in this corner of the globe. It is. You're a weirdo. So when you repress people, they just come back twice as weird. And that's why we're such freaks, most of us. They're just repressed. And um, um, be nice to sort of free that by making more mainstream. And the, the bike share is the ultimate in mainstream. That's the button. That is the button. Now, 
couple of things here that struck me as being interesting. It's based actually on your experience in the last 24 hours or so here in Hamilton. When we first arrived at the bed and breakfast, um, Evan asked if he needed the key, and the proprietor said, no, you don't need a key, we'll just leave the door open. And you, you, there was a palpable silence where Evan was sort of wrestling with this. And at dinner last night at Dundas, we left three bikes just sort of sitting outside unlocked and concerned that these bikes might not be here anymore. And I, want to, I don't know if you can see clearly in the screen behind you, or behind me, but how many locks do you have on the bike? This company led me this, wanted me to test this $5,600 bike that they market as a city bike, which is sort of absurd because in any real city, you'd have to be an idiot to use a $5,600 bike and leave it outside. But since it's not my bike, it's like, great, lend me the bike. I, I, I want to leave this. I secretly hope every time I lock it up that it'll come back and it's gone. And I can just send them the picture of cut chain on the <laughs> sidewalk. You know, there's your city bike, good, good city bike. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's, yeah, at the same time, I'm not going to deliberately lock it poorly. So so in order to, to, to give it even a fighting chance, yeah, I have the big chain lock in the, in the front and then the U lock to, to the back wheel and the chain lot for the seat. And even that's inadequate because those handlebars can be stolen in two seconds. I've had my handlebars stolen, you know, they just cut the cables and take the, the, the cockpit off the bike. Um, yeah, that's the other thing with their repressing. All these prerequisites people, some people, they'll only ride a bike if it's the special thing again. It's I have to feel special. So I'm going to ride a bike. It needs to be a special bike. It needs to be expensive. As, as a cycling infrastructure and a number of people cycling grows, um, do, are there A, fewer special, fewer special bikes involved, or does it become, or are you at There's less more. risk or more risk for, for theft on precisely those grounds? I think, and this is anecdotal, I think as more people start riding and they immediately want a fancy bike and then all of their bikes get stolen and then they learn their, okay. their lesson, but that's just, I think that's just the way it works. Okay. I think like everybody's first nice bike just gets stolen. <laughs> I really do, yeah. Because the, uh, the last person who should have a nice city bike is the person who wins their first bike. It takes a long time to learn how the thieves work and how they take stuff and why. Right. You know, so they should. you should not be, you got to lose a few bikes before you figure that out. Right. Don't put all your money into that first bike. It's just stupid. Unless you're never going to leave it outside. <laughs> That's my way. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like Charles Milam in the Murphy's bike? Uh, I, I don't know where that's that set up. Uh, isn't that how they used to set the hour records and stuff? They, they would go behind the train or something. They would just turn the huge. They would yeah. get that thing turned over eventually. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then go, my knees just hurt looking at it. Yeah. I don't know. I, that's I, I can handle it. <laughs> Don't hurt. Uh -huh. I just like the picture. Yeah, how oh, he's still on the bike. There yeah. you go. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was where the lock was supposed to come beside the lock one, which would have been funny. Oh, okay. We yeah. could have pretended he was running away from the bike dance, even though it's clearly not. But, um, today is the 25th anniversary of the very first critical mass ride in New York and in San Francisco. Um, Critical mass. It's happening today. And, so, but there, and there's a ride happening today. Um, yeah. Where does this fit? I mean, we haven't actually talked a lot about cycling advocacy beyond just sort of general stuff. But, I mean, do you have a general feel about? I mean, what about critical mass? Well, or, yeah, we're cycling advocacy. I think it depends where you are. I think um, I think it's stupid in a place like New York where uh, where cycling is not something that. Uh, well, let's just say, in New York, it's normal to see people riding bikes. Um, not just now, when it's more popular than it has been, but it's always been more or less normal to see somebody out on a bike. And uh, um, and it's also a place that, um, obviously, is prone to lots of traffic snarls, and uh, people are irritated enough as it is. So I know my understanding of critical mass is that it lets people know you're out there, and all of this, and the solidarity, and so forth. I, don't, I feel like you don't need that. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's just an annoying thing in a place where you just annoy people. And I've been stuck in critical mass on a bike, 
and that's annoying. I was, I was out on my bike once and I ran into a critical mass right by accident. I want to kill these people. And um, so I don't think there's any use for it there, but I could certainly see in a place where I felt totally alone because I rode a bike and, and, and uh, 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 meeting and some kindred uh, uh, people wanting to sort of get together and feel human and express ourselves. That I can understand it. Uh, and in a place where it's not gonna just choke the whole city and just irritate people, people so. But yeah, I don't know. Do they, do they have it here? We've got one. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's just sort of started to restart it. Okay. And what happened? Did people get angry? Uh, I didn't go to the last one, so I don't know if anyone yeah, did. Yeah, like, we awesome. had it. We had it a few well, a while back, and then it kind of died out. And then last month it started up again, and then today it's of course last Friday of the month, so it's happening again. That's not worth it. Then people don't get angry at you. Oh, maybe not the riders, but some quite a certain. There's always going to be one or two people in the car who are stupid. Like it's not like a major. Does anyone have musical instruments on the bike? <laughs> like playing drums? That would be great. Like that. It used to be pretty big, and there was definitely a few friends that always did it. There was an eight people in the last year. Yeah. Once, it, once every six months, I think. Yeah. There were about 100 people. Yeah. No, no instruments, but. No, no crazy exuberance. Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's all context. I think there's some places. I get it in some places where I think we don't get it. Yeah. But if, if every bike should have a new solution, I eat a bell. A bell is nice, yeah. Well, yeah. No, you just see some of these critical masses where they have like the guy with the drum on his drum kit on his bike and all kinds of crazy lights and people do all sorts of wild things. I was wondering. I don't I don't sense much exuberance from this. <laughs> We're very staid kind of people. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's sort of what I was trying to gauge and confirm. That is confirmed. You, so. you had a really sort of funny sort of bit in the blog not so very long ago about the Bellatron for one. Yeah. Um, that was gifted was being gifted to the city but there was resistance to it. Yeah, so I just wants to build it and then people are saying we don't want it. Okay, why not? Uh, they, because it would cause too much traffic and not enough people would use it. So figure that one out. <laughs> it would cause too much traffic and not enough people would use it. Is there, is they there just didn't want one. They just didn't, didn't, didn't want one. I mean, and, and I, I'm sure there's a, and then they you hear all kinds of different reasons. I'm sure some people think that uh, just like a small handful of weirdos are going to use it. And, it's sort of true, but then somebody pointed out that uh, they're building a beach uh, volleyball court in that same um, uh, park, which is equally niche, ridiculous. But I guess maybe people like to look at people playing beach volleyball, and maybe people gawk at it. I don't know. I don't know. And the yeah, but then like the velodrome. But I'm sure there were more more. Uh, uh, but that, that was the main objection. I think, I think people just don't like, uh, I think people just sort of like to reject uh, bike stuff out of hand. I have to admit, I wasn't, I, 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 I'm not particularly invested in the Bellagrove thing. I sort of don't care because I would probably go to it and enjoy it and maybe I'd even use it. But uh, at the same time, sort of, to get older, I just have less uh, uh, um, respect for bike, any kind of bike racing. <laughs> Good, does it really do anybody? Let's well, be I, honest. Well, let, let, let's expand on that really quick. What's the ultimate place you could get? Where, where does it leave ultimately? For what's the top tier of competitive cycling? Look at it, it's a mess. <laughs> it's right. just drug scandals and all of this, like. But is there, is there a relationship why, between? Does that really need to be fostered? And Does anyone really want their kid to become a professional cyclist? Yeah? Oh, I, I'm agreeing. I, if my kid wanted to become a professional cyclist, I would be. Please don't even play drums in a band. That, 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 that would be. No. I mean, you know. But is there a relationship between, between organized cycling, whether it's racing or 
group rides or what have you with sort of developing a, a broader baseline for, I'm thinking not less of you. Yeah, it's like any other, yeah, yeah, any other um, sport or whatever, of course. Whether it's camaraderie, physical activity, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I was just sort of thinking, let's translate that and just as simply into the road and commuting and. Yeah, of course. No, all that stuff's great. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and it's being, I mean, treat uh, with the price action. Well, I, I, it's yeah, exciting times we're having right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. That, that's also it's the thing. Every people love to get behind. I feel like there is a, a, a segment of the cycling population that really gets likes to get behind the velodrome because you're supposed to, and then. Right. You feel like that? Like a lot of these people are full of it. Because then they'll open the velodrome and they're like, "Yeah, I wish I could go to work." How cyclists are. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.